Hi, I'm Maddie. And I'm Sam. Thank you again for all of your brilliant questions. We're going to do our best to answer some of the most puzzling ones. Yeah, and first up we've got one from Junior Penatilla who asks, can animals make complicated tools? And what's the most complicated tool an animal has used? Yes, animals definitely use tools. And one of my favourites is the sea otter. So when a sea otter has found itself a tasty little <laughs> mollusk or a crustacean, it will float on its back and use a stone, which it just gently rests on its stomach, and then it can bash the mollusk against it to open it up. And they've actually got a favourite stone, which I think is quite sweet. And they're not the only things to have a favourite tool, much like the rest of us. Uh, capuchin monkeys often have a favourite sort of log or stone that kind of acts like a little bit of a groove they can put nuts in, so if it can act like an anvil, and they get another big stone, often as big as its head, and get a good <laughs> smashing, and then take the nut from there. Oh, that's like a very basic nutcracker. Yeah. Yeah. And birds too are really great tool users. Um, New Caledonian crows have been known to whittle branches into sort of little hook shapes, and they can use that to then get to food in hard to reach places. And crows in Japan are actually using some of our tools. They're dropping nuts onto roads so that cars will run over them and break them for them. Mm. And it gets even cleverer because they'll drop them onto pedestrian crossings so they know the traffic's going to stop and then they can fly down safely and pick them up. Yeah, I love that so much. It's genius. I mean, all of these tools are fairly basic, but they definitely get the job done. But let's think, what are the most sophisticated tools that well, animals use? Chimps do something quite cool. Uh, they've got, they often sort of grab little long branches and use them to fish for termites. Oh yeah, yeah. They sort of stick them down holes and waggle them to agitate the termites. <laughs> and the waggle. termites <laughs> attack the stick and then they can just easily pull the stick out and yeah. termite kebab. Okay, Jennifer Love says her son has always wanted to know, do you ever really touch anything? Uh, yeah, I mean it's an interesting question. It depends what you really mean by touch. Uh, Sam, you can, I'm touching Sam, and you, I assume you can definitely feel it. I'm sat yeah. here on a beanbag. I can feel that I'm sat here on a beanbag. So yes, I'm I'm touching it. Or are you though? On yes. the atomic scale, you're not, in fact. Right. So okay, you're prodding me, <laughs> but I can feel it. So surely you're touching me. Well, at that atomic level, the electrons are repelling each other at the edge of the atom. So although your <laughs> arms deforming and my fingers deforming. They're never actually quite touching each other. But that de deformation is telling my brain, you are. So there's a tiny gap. A tiny but gap. But we're talking really tiny because, Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm shutting my eyes and I, there isn't a gap there. So this is... It's pretty small. It's 0 0.00000001 centimetres. And there will always be that space between the atoms. And there'll always be that space. And technically, all the atoms in your body aren't touching each other. So you are just a pile of atoms. But a very lovely pile. Oh. Sweetest thing anyone's ever said. That is touching. Oh! oh. That is rubbish. Uh, and moving on, <laughs> thank you very much for your questions. As always, keep them coming in. And why not share this video with someone you haven't been in touch with for a while? That's everyone. See you soon. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Capuchins are highly intelligent primates that will always spot an opportunity for food. Underneath their tough exterior, clams offer a meaty meal and these clever monkeys have worked out a way to crack them open. Termites can be very fussy about living in a constant temperature because some species cultivate fungal gardens for food and this fungus grows best at 30 degrees Celsius.